What are the complications of gallstones? If you can't confidently answer that question, then you need to watch this tutorial. Gallstones are stones in the gallbladder and they can cause a multitude of problems. Now in this tutorial, I'm gonna give you a system so that you can answer that question confidently and then we'll run through some of these complications so that in practice, you'll be able to recognize a patient suffering a gallstone related problem and then work out what that problem is. There are three types of gallstones. Cholesterol stones, and these are brown gallstones arising due to cholesterol supersaturation of bile, causing them to precipitate in the gallbladder. Pigment stones are made of bilirubin and other bile pigments, together with calcium salts, and these are black. And then there are mixed stones. Remember, bile is in an intrahepatic circulation, means that they go from the liver to the gut, from the terminal ileum and back to the liver, and anything that disrupts the absorption of bile salts or disrupts the composition of bile or the flow of bile in the biliary tree and gallbladder can give rise to gallstones. So with this in mind, what are the risk factors? Well, this is simple. First, remember the four Fs, fat, 40s, female and fertile. And then the extras, hemolytic anemias, which can give rise to pigment stones, Crohn's disease, perhaps due to the deleterious effects on the terminal ileum and pregnancy due to bile stasis. And finally, rapid weight loss. So here we have a diagram of the biliary tree and the relevant anatomy. So the first thing to say is gallstones can be asymptomatic. They can just sit in the gallbladder and the owner won't even know he or she has them. On the other hand, this gallstone can get stuck in the neck of the gallbladder or Hartman's pouch with the gallbladder contracting against it. Now that's going to hurt and that is called biliary colic. Now this can actually result in inflammation of the gallbladder, which is cholecystitis. So here we have an inflamed gallbladder now. This can vary in severity from a mild cholecystitis to a necrotic perforated gallbladder, empyema of the gallbladder, so a gallbladder full of pus, and even a liver abscess. Now imagine the gallstone leaving the gallbladder and lodging somewhere in the common bile duct. Say here, for example. This might lead to Charcot's triad of pain, fever, and also jaundice, as the flow of bile is obstructed. So biliary stasis causes inflammation and infection with gram-negative and anaerobic bacteria, and that's called ascending cholangitis. Now, if a gallstone compresses the CBD from within the gallbladder, this is called Maritzi syndrome and can also cause ascending cholangitis. And undergraduate level, I really don't think you need to know more than this, except that it's pretty rare. Now let's take our gallstone and see where else it might lodge. Ah yes, the ampulla ovata. And as we can see here, this is the major duodenal papilla. And a stone here can block the main pancreatic duct. So another complication of gallstones is acute pancreatitis. And lastly, this is relatively uncommon, and that's a gallstone ileus. It is the possible result of a cholecystoduodenal fistula, so a communication developing between the gallbladder and duodenum, allowing passage of a gallstone, which may get lodged somewhere in the mid or distal ileum where the bowel becomes narrower. And this gives rise to a mechanical small bowel obstruction. Okay, so imagine the anatomy and think, where can a gallstone lodge? And you should be able to pick up all the different possible complications of gallstones. So let's run through a few and talk about the salient clinical features and aspects of management. So first up is biliary colic. Biliary pain is typically right upper quadrant or epigastric, radiates round to the back. Attacks will last at least 20 to 30 minutes at a time and typically come on at night after a fatty meal. There may also be some vomiting. Now, biliary colic only really requires analgesia, some antiemetics, and perhaps some IV fluids too if the patient is vomiting. Now, when the patient starts describing fevers or there's a positive Murphy sign or raised inflammatory markers, we can then say there's also some inflammation. So the diagnosis becomes more of cholecystitis. Now this is important because this requires antibiotics, whereas biliary colic does not. Ascending cholangitis, now the key thing to remember here is Charcot's triad. Pain, fever, and jaundice equals ascending cholangitis until proven otherwise. Now bloods will show elevated bilirubin in addition to inflammatory markers. Ultrasound scan will not only show gallstones, but a dilated biliary tree and common bile duct. IV antibiotics and IV fluids is essential as these patients with the, all the gram-negative bugs and anaerobes in the biliary tree can become profoundly septic. Now what's more, biliary decompression, 
So removing the stone or passing a stent into the CBD to bypass the obstruction must happen as soon as possible. So that's an ERCP or endoscopic retrograde cholangiopancreatography. Now, don't forget to check the amylase. If it's three times the upper limit of normal, then you've almost certainly got a case of pancreatitis. This time, the pain is typically epigastric, radiating through to the back and not around to the back. Now, this is potentially life-threatening condition. And again, early ERCP is what's required in all cases of pancreatitis with proven or suspected gallstone etiology. Now with gallstone ileus, your patient is going to give you a story not of right upper quadrant pain necessarily, but of small bowel obstruction. So that's vomiting, abdominal distension and constipation. The clue here is in the abdominal film. Now there might be some air in the biliary tree, some small bowel dilatation and perhaps a suspicious opacity, i.e. a gallstone, that may give the game away. But bear in mind, most gallstones are radiolucent. Often the diagnosis is found on CT and the management is a laparotomy and making a little hole in the small bowel to retrieve the gallstone and relieve the obstruction. Now, generally speaking, asymptomatic patients don't require cholecystectomy. However, those who have suffered any of these complications we've talked about can be offered it, particularly those suffering pancreatitis or other life-threatening problems. In summary, gallstones can occur in men and women, but occur more often in those who are fat, female, fertile, and in their 40s. They can also occur in those with hemolytic anemias, Crohn's disease, and those who have rapidly lost weight. Think through the complications that they can cause by considering the anatomy. Biliary colic features only biliary pain with no inflammatory features. Cholecystitis may feature fevers and a Murphy sign with raised inflammatory markers. Ascending cholangitis is what you get when you mix pain, fever and jaundice until proven otherwise. Maritzia syndrome is rare and caused by external compression of the CBD by a gallstone. Now we're getting towards the ampulla of Varta. A stone there can cause pancreatitis due to obstruction of the pancreatic duct. And gallstone ileus you may see on occasion is a mechanical small bowel obstruction caused by the gallbladder having fistulated into the duodenum. And then a gallstone finds its way through and then becomes lodged into a narrow part of the small bowel. Phew! So, gallstones, piece of cake. Bye bye.